most powerful person in any courtroom, and whether they work at a small district court or the highest court in the state, all of them are supposed to be held to the highest standards. But could a new rule being considered in Lansing right now be good news for bad judges? Here's 7 investigator Ross Jones. In just the last few years, judges throughout Michigan have made the news for all the wrong reasons. The Michigan Judicial Tenure Commission recommending today that Sanders be removed from the bench. A 30-day unpaid suspension for Oakland County Judge Lisa Gorsica. Now that judge could be thrown off the bench. Since 2014, 34 judges across the state have faced some sort of action that began here at the Judicial Tenure Commission. Some have been reprimanded, others kicked off the court entirely. But holding judges accountable in the future could get more difficult because of a new rule being considered by the state Supreme Court. The state's justices are considering adding a three-year statute of limitations to complaints against judges. According to the proposed rule, any complaint filed more than three years after the grievant knew or should have known shall be dismissed. There are just all kinds of reasons why trying to defend something three years after the fact is difficult. Attorney Brian Einhorn says the new rule makes sense. He's represented dozens of judges accused of misconduct, from former Judge Wade McCree, who carried on an affair with a litigant, to ex-Justice Diane Hathaway, who was sent to prison for bank fraud. If a person knows that or thinks that a judge did something and did it and, and held on to it for three and a half or four years, I don't think it's fair to the judge to have to defend himself or herself. Does it make sense to you? No. Not at all. Peter Henning is a former federal prosecutor and today is a law professor at Wayne State University. You're talking about uh, an individual who has immense power. If you have certain types of cases, say for example a sexual harassment case, that may take years to surface um, because the individual who was harassed is going to be intimidated. Should the judge be able to get off simply because it happened more than three years ago? We're dealing with something that's probably not going to happen very often. But there have been past examples of misconduct that could have been thrown out with a statute of limitations in place. Here in Wayne County, Judge Bruce Morrow was disciplined for misconduct that happened years before a formal complaint was filed, including giving bond to a man after he was convicted of rape, even though state law didn't allow it. Morrow was suspended for two months. And right now, Livingston County Judge Teresa Brennan is under fire for her affair with a state police officer that testified in a murder trial in her courtroom. His testimony helped send a man to prison. Their affair happened more than three years before it was finally discovered, and it's unclear if the JTC is investigating today. Still, attorney Brian Einhorn says judges shouldn't have to defend themselves from years-old allegations after memories fade and evidence becomes stale. There's timing for doing everything, all right? And there's nothing different about a judge being accused of misconduct to a lawyer being accused of malpractice to a doctor being accused of malpractice. Except in Michigan, there is no statute of limitations for complaints against lawyers or doctors either. And giving judges special protection would be unique and improper, says Carl Marlinga, who's a judge himself. The unintended effect certainly is to offer a level of protection to bad judges. Anything that would protect or shield a judge from scrutiny I just think is wrong. The statute of limitations is being considered right now by the state's seven justices, and a decision could come any day. What is the benefit? Uh, what is the upside other than what appears to be giving judges added protections? Under the proposed rule, complaints older than three years could still be heard if commissioners find what's called good cause to move forward. But critics fear that term is vague at best and will lead to drawn out legal battles. If you have evidence that a judge acted improperly, I'd like to hear from you. Send me an email at ross.jones at wxyz.com.